transfer of learning is one of the, I guess one of the simplest sort of concepts we have in sports science, because it simply means that learning one thing influences the learning of another. So you will know in your math study, for example, that if you learn, let's say, multiplying integers or numbers, you might that might have an impact on how you multiply, let's say, negative numbers, right? I mean, they're numbers too, but you know what I mean. So that's all we're talking about here. And to sort of kick us off, I guess, I just want to introduce this phrase to you, positive transfer, because it's one of the four types we want to look at. It's simply saying that if we learn one skill, it can have a positive influence on the learning of another. So what might an example of this be? Well, if, for example, I've played hockey my whole life, um, field hockey, it might be that when I take up golf, I have a capacity to strike the ball cleanly. That's all that means. So we want to know, especially from the, the coach's perspective, how to cause positive transfer. Because if you consider this, if you are coaching, let's say, archery or you're a PE teacher, you're going to be coaching lots of different things and you might want to be sort of saying to people, look, this this links to this, this links to this. Well, the first thing that you can do, I meant to change colour there, the first thing that you can do is try to attempt near transfer. Now, you might already be thinking, right, what? there's a different type of transfer. Near transfer is like when we practice like the game, where we practice like the competition, we practice in the sort of the real context of how we're ultimately going to do this thing. Secondly, it's really incumbent on the coach that they must point out, the coach points out similarities. So if, for example, I'm a tennis coach and the overhead smash is quite similar to the serving technique, say I'm not a tennis coach, by the way, so it may well not be, but let's say that it is. That's something I might uh, point out to the athletes so that they have a better capacity to sort of pick that up smoothly, easily, quickly. The other thing we might do is we might teach that overhead smash and the serve close together. So teach similar skills together or we might say close together not necessarily in the same session but within you know touching distance of one another let's go a little bit further with this we can also say and this is something that i'd really encourage you to sort of bring into your answers and all sorts of things ensure previous or specific specifically sort of fundamental skills are well learned previous skills are well learned because if you consider that we're trying to link a new learning to something or it could be in the past or in the future actually but we're trying to link new learning to something then it's better if that is well structured and well founded than it not being for example now other things a coach can do is they can use positive reinforcement that's a t positive reinforcement and what do we mean by this this could be praise for example some simply recognizing transfer so if somebody does show an example of where they've transferred their strong right footed passing in football to their left foot that's a, that's actually also something called bilateral transfer but if it's successful it's been linked positively that's positive transfer then we would highlight that and praise that perhaps we also as coaches want to deal in what we call progressive practices now what this means is that the athletes can sort of experience success with the skill in its maybe sort of refined format or broken down format and then we can add complexity as we go um, a couple of other sort of um key points that a coach might do i meant to change color there let me go to here the coach can also show planned progression now you might be wondering well what does that mean when we're coaching we want to show the athletes look we're going to start at point a but we're trying to reach point b we're trying to apply it in the game in the following ways or whatever it might be that's good practice for a coach and finally we want to point out point out similar and it's going to sound like I'm going to say what I said before. And I'm going to say here, IP requirements. Now, if you see IP, that means information processing. So if, for example, the information processing for catching a ball in cricket and rounders are very, very similar stimuli, then, of course, we can guide people to do that the same way. So there's our positive transfer. Now, of course, by definition, that means there's negative transfer, okay? So the first thing we want to do is recognise what it is. It's the learning of one skill inhibits, inhibits. This means worsens or negatively affects. That's what inhibits means. The opposite, by the way, is to facilitate. We've got to use that for positive. But I want to quickly address the causes of negative. If we've just looked at how to promote positive transfer, what is it that might actually cause negative transfer? The first thing is misunderstanding. So let's say we're a PE teacher and we're coaching a basketball set shot. If the performers, if the children don't understand that effectively, if they misunderstand the requirement, it's quite likely we're going to get negative transfer. They're going to do something from another technique which is not appropriate in this environment. Um, it also can be caused by a familiar 
stimulus. So something that we've sort of seen before, let's say a ball coming towards us, requires a different response, okay? Requires different response. Now I've seen this one so many times with basketball players trying to play, uh, um, sorry, netball players trying to play basketball, for example, or vice versa, where they'll receive the ball and the netball player will immediately look to pivot and pass. And the basketball player playing netball will immediately consider, look, I need to get onto the front foot to dribble. I might sort of try and get to triple threat for shot. And of course, that's not going to be as relevant in this environment. A couple of other points. It can happen if skills appear similar but aren't. That was meant to say similar, but aren't. <laughs> so if it seems like they're the same thing, but actually are really different, let's talk about bowling and cricket and bowling and softball. These are really different skills. You know, there's no bounce in softball. We're bowling with a looped underarm action rather than overarm. So these are you know, obviously quite different. And it also happens if conflicting, if conflicting skills are coached together. Okay, so if something is conflicting, we sort of want to separate it out and make sure that we don't get contamination. Finally, my final course is that practice and competition are different. So if we practice and compete differently, so if we are not doing near transfer, this is actually what we call far transfer, when we don't do this, that's likely to cause negative transfer. Okay, so we want to practice like the competition. Now, this is what we want to look at. Therefore, how do we prevent, let's go for green, how do we prevent negative? So of course the coach, the athlete, they want to prevent negative, which of course is going to promote positive, right? So how do we do, how do, we do that? No surprise, practice like the comp, you know, we already know that this is um, near transfer. We want to draw attention to differences. So just actually tell the performer, look, this is how these two skills are different. You know, that, that, let me go back to my tennis example, the smash and the serve, of course, the smash, the ball could be coming um, from the front of you, could be slightly behind you, whereas the serve, the ball's gonna be directly above you or above just in front, consistently so, right? So those are differently. We must thoroughly learn skills. And what I mean by this is there is a tendency thoroughly learn skills. There is a tendency in sports coaching that athletes will learn something, not master it, and we move on regardless. Well, we're saying here, before moving on, master the fundamentals, master the fundamentals. We also want clear teaching steps so that people can follow the path of progression nice and simply, okay? And it's absolutely clear what those progressions are. We don't overload our athletes, don't give too much information, too much expectation all in one go. An example would be maybe two coaching points, three coaching points rather than 10 in each occasion. And we want to avoid teaching or coaching, of course, we could say using those terms interchange, but they are slightly different. Avoid teaching, conflicting, things together okay and that that of course relates directly to those points we've made previously about that same notion now to finish off with i simply want to introduce you to two further types of transfer by a million miles this is my favorite one i cannot wait for them to ask you about this one in your exam because it's called zero transfer and just to be clear what zero transfer means, it means when the learning of a skill has no impact on another. So goodness knows how they're gonna ask you about that in your exam, but it's named for you, so you must know it. There is no impact <laughs> by the learning of one skill to another. And the, the last one, which you very well may well be asked about, is what we call bilateral transfer. And I'll ask you to sort of ponder what you think that is. Um, but what I'm gonna tell you is a very, very simple thing. It's from one side of the body to another. From And I have actually given an example of this already. From one side of the body to another. So this is a rugby player, and she typically kicks off, kicks drop, uh, goals off her left foot, but it, because of the pressure of a defender on her left side, she switches to kick a, a drop goal with her right foot, okay? So that would be the example. So an example is from left to right, obviously vice versa is absolutely fine and we can transfer skills neatly. You've probably tried playing certain sports that you're good at with the other hand, the other foot, the other leg, the other arm, whatever it is. Actually really hard, but it's an interesting thing because it takes you right back to that cognitive stage of learning. Hope that's useful, cheers.